I see it has started. It has. We have started. I'm just sending the link out now to everybody. Hello and welcome to today's uh, release call. Uh, we're joined by uh, ClickHouse co-founder and original creati creator, Alexi, uh, and also Dale, who's going to be his able assistant when it comes to asking questions. Uh, so without further ado, I'll hand you off uh, to, Dale, uh, to uh, Alexi. Thank you. By the way, you said creator or creative? I'm not sure what is ClickHouse creative. <laughs> No, the original ClickHouse creator. Perfect, perfect. But it sounds funny. Uh, we will start in about two minutes. And I see many people are joining. And if your friends are not in Zoom, they can join on YouTube. We have live stream on our channel uh, with a bit of delay. I don't like delay, even two seconds. So I appreciate if everyone will join live in Zoom without any delay. And welcome our regular attendees. Welcome, Alexey Vizunov. Welcome, Ellen. Nice to see you again. Welcome, Artur, Boris, Denis G or Denis G. Sorry if I am pronouncing incorrectly, but welcome anyway. Welcome, Emra. Welcome, John Kennedy. What interesting name, by the way. Jonathan Ackerman, Kirill Mankov, Nerd Hacker, Mikhail Kagazin. Welcome, our regular contributor, by the way. Nikolai Loginov. Yes, I can read your second name. Uh, Patrick, Ricky Salzer, welcome again. Robert Schulze, welcome my colleague. Rupa, I'm so glad you joined us. Todd and Brawl and Roger Dan Bree, Brian. Nice. So, we have so many features and so big release. So let's start. Let me share the presentation. Okay, so this is about ClickHouse 23.8 LTS release. What does it mean? 23 is the current year, 8 is the current month, and LTS is long-term support release. So twice a year, we have a special release that is supported with patches and bug fixes for at least one year. So you don't uh, be afraid in starting this version uh, because you can just install a new patch, another patch, without installing a subsequent version like 23.9, 23.10, and so on. It is for someone who needs long-term support. So I will spend most of the time for new features and hopefully we will have just a few minutes for your questions. And if you have questions, you can post in Zoom, in YouTube, and my colleagues, Nick and Dale, will ask these questions live. So what do we have? 29 new features. It should be 30 actually, but 29, good anyway. 19 performance optimizations and 63 bug fixes a lot, a lot of bug fixes. So when this version will be released today, I appreciate if you install it as soon as possible. So many nice stuff. So what do we have? Let's start with some uninteresting features. 
uninspiring features, unexciting features, and I would say features that are just boring. <laughs> and I invited so many people, like hundreds of people, to just look how I will explain these uninspiring features. What is the most uninspiring? And by the way, if you find anything actually interesting or inspiring, please tell me in the chat because I will not think so if you will not do it. Uh, the first one is arithmetic operations on vectors. So ClickHouse has a great support for arrays. You define arrays just with square brackets like this. And also, and this is unique uh, to ClickHouse, comparing to other database management systems, we have higher order functions with lambda functions. And you can apply these functions to arrays. And this is what ClickHouse already have since year 2013. Uh, for example, with this array map function, you can easily sum two arrays. And this already worked. It worked fine. And it looks smart. And if you will write this query, you will also look smart. So ClickHouse will give you at least some advantage. But in version 23.8, you can sum arrays while looking entirely stupid and cool. Just write one array plus another array. And if these arrays are of the same size, you will get the result. If not, you will get an error message. It is implemented for plus and minus operators. It is not implemented for multiplication. And I want to ask you, why did not we implement it for multiply operator? Why? And if your answer, if you type the answer to the chat, and if your answer will be correct, I will give you this t-shirt. <clears throat> I want your answer. I will give you just three seconds to type it. And I want it not because I want to know what the answer is, but I want it because this t-shirt is so great. I want to make a gift. So please do. Dale, do we have any answer? We have one answer, which uh, we have one answer. We can write more than three seconds. If someone else puts another answer, the, the first answer, which I can't pronounce their name because it's in Russian, apologies, um, is that it would be a matrix in most cases. It would be a matrix and that wouldn't be uh, I suppose they're they're implying that wouldn't be logical to display. Um, and then the other answer is products of two arrays need to be transposed. Not sure that's a limitation. Um, so we've only got two answers, and I'm going to imagine neither of those. Uh, this is a good answer, which I think is the right answer, because it's not defined whether it's a dot product or vector multiplication. Absolutely. The third answer is correct. As I thought, and that's from Mikhail. Uh, I'll ping Mikhail, and he can um, reach out to reach out to Tyler for that T-shirt. Uh, perfect. Uh, the second answer was uh, partially correct because you can multiply vectors in a different way. Like scalar product is one way, or external product that will give a matrix something like matrix, or <clears throat> any other way multiple ways to, to do it. Uh, okay, what is quite similar, and I'm not sure if it is useful, concatenation of tuples. So we have this concatenation operator or uh, a different syntax, but the same meaning, concat function. And you can concatenate strings. But now you can also concatenate tuples. And what it will do, it will just replace this to this. Easy. 
you can concatenate two, two tuples with two elements each, and you will get one tuple of four elements each. Nice. Do you need it? I'm not sure. Another uninteresting feature. It is so uninteresting. It is about cluster and cluster all replicas table function. So uh, in ClickHouse, you can create a distributed table and query your cluster as a single table. The query will be distributed. If you don't want to create distributed table explicitly, you can also use a table function. There are such table functions as remote, remote secure, cluster, and cluster all replicas. The cluster all replicas table function has one argument with the name of your cluster and another argument with the table name. And it will query every server in your cluster as a shard, collect the results, summarize whatever. The typical usage of this function is for simple queries, when you just want to get a summary of your cluster. For example, you query host name, version, and uptime of every server in your cluster. But you have to specify this, the table name. And what is this table? It is like dual uh, table in Oracle or MySQL. It is just a table containing a single record. So a single record will be received from every server and you will ignore it and instead calculate these functions. And it's quite unusual, you have to explain what it is. I don't want to explain. So in the new version, you just omit this arg argument and it is system.1 by default. It looks like this. And you can also remove all arguments and the default cluster name will be by default. Sounds nice. And this is much more useful, useful for usability. Automatic suggestions to correct misspellings in a table and database name. If you mistaken checks with hex, it will tell you hex don't exist. <laughs> Maybe you meant checks. If you confuse the database name, like a typo in the world, in the word default, you will get a suggestion. It is nice and it is uh, again unsurprising because we already had this feature for function names, data type names, aggregate function names, table function names, everything. But now also for tables and databases. Another two boring features, truncate database. You know, there is truncate table. It's like make this table empty, but don't drop it. Now there is also truncate database. What is the purpose? Why don't, why isn't it enough to just drop database and then create it again? Two reasons. First reason, maybe you forgot how to create your database. Uh, suppose it has a long definition with a database engine and you don't want to bother. Okay, uh, looks like it is not the main motivation. There is another use case. Imagine there are many clients connecting to ClickHouse and doing create table if not exists. And if you drop the database, these clients will receive errors. If you truncate the database, these clients will automatically recreate the tables. So 
it's a good example uh, to motivate this feature. And yet another boring feature is Azure Blob Storage Cluster table function. Actually, when I see a table function containing four words, it starts to be a little bit scary. Compare it to something like S3. Actually, no, S3 is also two, two words, not one. Okay, what it is. So ClickHouse has an integration with Azure, Microsoft Azure. And Azure has a service named Blob Storage. It is similar to S3, but different because they have everything a little bit different. And uh, you can use a table function named Azure Blob Storage uh, to just read or write um, files and process them. But if you also add cluster, so it will be Azure Blob Storage Cluster and specify your cluster name, it can process many, many files using the resources of all the clusters. So imagine you have 100 of ClickHouse servers and 1 million of files. And you just type this simple query and your cluster, it will uh, uh, like do all the power. Uh, it will use all the hardware, all the network. Maybe your network will explode after this. Maybe some people from the data center will say that the data center is on fire, but ClickHouse will work. Okay, now about performance optimizations, something that I like the most. ClickHouse is about performance and for performance and the best performance and everything about performance. And we have many improvements for uh, reading of files, for data import, data processing on the fly, say ETL or ELT or whatever. If you have a data lake, you can use ClickHouse to get most of your lake. And the first feature is optimization that allows to count records without reading any columns. Let's look at this query. It will locate multiple files on the file system, but at the same time, it can use S3 or URL or Azure as well. And we requested to simply get the number of records. In the previous version, this query selected any column, read it, and count the number of records. And for this query with 100 of files and 100 million of records, it took 100 milliseconds. And you might have thought that it is fast, but it is not fast comparing to the new release 23.8, because this new release don't read any columns at all. It only reads the metadata it still has to spend some time for opening files and doing six and reading this metadata, but 22 milliseconds, five times faster. And it works not only for Parquet, it works even for TSV and CSV and JSON. And you might ask, but TSV doesn't have metadata and CSV as well. But nevertheless, it will simply count the number of lines that it will be simpler than deserializing column and really counting it. Another modification. <clears throat> Not reading files when we don't have to read them. And to explain it, there is the following example. By the way, 
the data set is public and you can just copy paste and reproduce on your own. So when you read multiple files, say 100 of them, uh, ClickHouse also provides you two virtual columns, underscore file and underscore path. And you can use these columns to filter by file name or full path. And the previous ClickHouse version already supported this query. And it sup supposedly worked in the previous version, but it worked in the following way. ClickHouse will read all the files and filter by file name then after reading, which is entirely inefficient. In the new version, it will filter the file names first and then read all only remaining file names. So it looks like we simply swapped two lines of code, right? And now it is infinite times faster. Infinite because I tested the latest version and it works pretty well, but for some reason, the previous version did not work at all. I don't know why. And I don't want to bother it. It should have worked, but no, it did not. <clears throat> Okay, but if we read just a single file or multiple files and we skip something inside it by filtering, some data formats are quite smart. And such a format like Parquet is slowly approaching the capabilities of ClickHouse. You might think that Parquet is like something like Proto ClickHouse. They used many, uh, many of the same ideas. It is not as powerful as Merge Tree, but still, it has embedded index to skip data by minimum and maximum conditions, by unique values. And in this example, let's just go straight to the numbers. In the previous version, this query took 0 0.7 seconds and it processed all the data, almost 100 million records with a speed of 20 gigabytes per second. 20 gigabytes per second, this is fast. And the new version is slower with just 3.48 gigabytes per second. So it process is processing data slower, but it spent less time, about six or seven times less, 0 0.1 seconds, because it process, processed less amount of records. It, it just filtered irrelevant records. So we have all these optimizations for external data formats, Parquet. Let's look at the benchmark. We have ClickBench and the results are that it is about 40% improvement on average on the ClickBench. And you can see that one query sped up three times. Many queries did not change. So where is the difference? And the difference is here. We have 43 benchmark queries and seven out of 43 could use index. And these seven queries sped up up to 20 times. So in average, we have just about 1.4, 40% difference. And this is huge. Okay, what else? Let me show you even more numbers. I like performance comparisons. And this is about just-in-time query compilation for ARM architecture. If you read boring academic papers, 
you might find some statements that analytical databases, if they want to be fast, they have to implement vectorized query processing or just-in-time compilation of queries. So a query will produce an ideal code for the specific CPU. Specific loops will be optimized, vectorized for maximum. But the actual truth from these academic papers is that if you want your analytical database to be fast, you should just take click house and throw off, throw away your analytical database and use click house instead. Because click house has support for both vectorized uh, query execution and query compilation with just in time compiler. And all of this at once together. Until recently, just-in-time compilation was not enabled for ARM, only for x86. Now we have it for ARM and up to 1.4, almost 1.5 improvement on performance of performance on some queries. Maybe not the most representative queries, but at least at least something. <clears throat> Okay, now about something really interesting, non-boring features, maybe experimental features, maybe just unusual features. And the first one is the support for direct importing from archives. And you know that ClickHouse can read from external files, say file.csv. And it can also read from any kind of compressed formats. ZSTD, LZ4, Snappy, GZIP, XZIP, BZIP2. And this is available for two years, maybe. This is not new. Say you have a data.csv.gz and ClickHouse will easily process this data. But this is just compressed formats for a single file. What if you have archives like zip 7z or tarball like tar.zst? These archives contain multiple files. Uh, they can contain a directory structure with uh, arbitrary complexity nesting. And the new feature, you can process data from inside archives directly. And it looks like this. You specify a path to archive, then a special syntax, this. This will separate the path to archive in your file system from the path inside archive. And this feature has support for everything. You can use glob matching for this part, for this uh, part, you can process all files, you can filter files. Let me better show you something, how it works. So let me make the font larger and I will run ClickHouse local. And I will process some files from my downloads folder. So I have something named uh, name book genome.zip. I don't know what it is. And there is a file inside this archive, reviews.json. First of all, I want to check if this feature even works. It works. Unsurprisingly, we have it in the new release and it works. It automatically derived the structure of JSON, automatically derived the types and column names. And now we can analyze this data. 
But even more, if I don't know the exact uh, file name or I want to process multiple files, I will use this uh, star glob. It works perfectly and it works fast. Okay. Did you know that we also support this star star glob? So ClickHouse has a lot of stars. It matches any sequence of directories. <clears throat> and it works again. Good. Okay. It was not it was not interesting for you. What about this? So we will use star star slash star dot csv. We will collect all csv files from this zip and we will ignore them and simply output their path. So it also has support for the path virtual column. Nice. Not so fast, but here are some files. And people even included this Mac OS X. I don't want this file, by the way. What else? We can use this uh, query, describe file. And we will get type inference. It will tell us what the file is, what it contains. Another example. So let's look inside this CSV. Nice. We have tags, identifiers, and scores. I don't know what it is. Maybe it is about books, book reviews, maybe. I already I already forgot how and why I downloaded this file. I hope it is it was legal to download it because I I downloaded it from a random website. Name it best datasets for you. Okay. Let's do some analytics. Nice. So we have uh, an average score for tags sorted by popularity. And the most popular tag about books is strange. And the second popular is Asia. And the third is treasure. So people should read books about strange treasures found in Asia during road trips that were cheesy and I will not continue reading. Okay, what about other interesting features? And this is what I dreamed a lot. Streaming consumption from S3. And now my dream is true. It is included in the 23.8 release. So what it is? We have a new table engine, S3Q. It has all the parameters similar to S3. Uh, you specify files, uh, possibly uh, credentials, possibly uh, hints about data format and data structure. But also it has a lot of interesting settings like mode equals to unordered. What it will do? It will look at this bunch of files and it will schedule these files for consumption. It will consume and read from these files one after another, but only if you subscribe it to this table with materialized view. And this materialized view can do processing of this data with any type of select query, 
and writing the result to the destination table. So it is similar how uh, Kafka or RabbitMQ uh, table engine works. You use it in the same way. And it will constantly check if there are new files on S3 and uh, consume these files. And it has a lot of tunes. For example, it can uh, keep these files as is. It will only track the state, which files were processed, which are not, and continue to consume the new files. It can delete, delete files after consumption. The state is stored inside ClickHouse Keeper, and you define a path inside ClickHouse Keeper for this uh, state. And it enables parallel and distributed consumption. You can create this table on all servers of your cluster, and they will just split by files and consume different files without duplicates. And uh, there are two modes, unordered and ordered. With ordered mode, it will track the maximum processed file name and process only the files that are greater or say, say lexicographically greater than the latest processed file. For example, if files contain timestamp in their name. There is unordered mode. It will track the whole set of processed files regardless of how big it is. So it is quite nice. And I want to say this feature is very fresh. It is experimental. It will be included in the today release 23.8. But at the same time, my colleagues are preparing patches for this feature. So it will be production ready today, hopefully before midnight. If not, no, it will be ready before midnight. My colleagues promised that. Okay, what do we have for bonus? Something even less usual. What is the most unusual way to run ClickHouse? Let's take a look at different CPU architectures. We have a x86-64, it is boring architecture, it is so, so old, so sometimes inefficient. There is ARM or ARCH64. Until recently it was mostly for mobile phones, but now there are servers for ARM and ClickHouse is run in production on this architecture. There is RISC-V 64, even newer, mostly used for small embedded devices that are even less powerful than mobile phones like smart cameras or whatever, drones probably. And you can put ClickHouse there and it will work. There is PowerPC with multiple different options, but what is new? Now we have a cross compiler built for big iron, that big, like on this picture. Imagine how powerful ClickHouse will be on this mainframe. And uh, uh, this support was contributed by that big company. But the cross compiled build was added by my colleague, Yakov. And 
we had to add it because we received so many pull requests for support of this architecture. So we started to question how we are going to test this build, how we ensure that it will not be broken. And the only way is to include it in the automated build. I'm not sure if you need this feature, but I, would ju I just want to brag. Now ClickHouse works on S390X. What is the opposite, opposite of big mainframes? The opposite is serverless. If you hear that AWS launched serverless ClickHouse on AWS Lambda, what you will think? Probably you will think something different, but you know, uh, AWS has a wonderful customer support, including solution architects. And I was discussing one idea with one of these solution architects. And this idea received some enthusiasm. So it was tested. Okay, let me explain. The idea is as following. So imagine, uh, let's suppose you have a, a data set or multiple files uh, laying in, inside your S3 bucket. Say CSV, TSV, Parquet, ORC, JSON, just a bunch of files, data lake, data mesh, data mess, whatever. And you want not just download these files, you want to query them directly. And this is easy. Just install ClickHouse local and query, install ClickHouse server and query this data, distribute in distributed fashion. Start using ClickHouse Cloud, get a cluster and also query this data uh, on distributed cluster. It is easy. But there is one option to make it even more seamless, even more elegant. So you create a Lambda function you create a special URL endpoint for this Lambda function, and you query this URL endpoint with the bucket and uh, object name. And also you post a select query. And this query is processed by ClickHouse located basically nowhere. It's or maybe somewhere, or you don't care. It is, it exists, but it is serverless. And out of nowhere, your data is processed by this query. And your bucket, instead of just a bunch of files, it be becomes like a database. So it is easy, it is not a distributed query, it, it uses just a single Lambda, invocation, the resources of a single Lambda. And it is similar to another feature from AWS that already exists, S3 select. But with this feature, you get all ClickHouse query language, all ClickHouse power. Maybe it is faster than S3 select, and most likely because ClickHouse is such a nice technology. So here is a repository. I advise you to take a look, to try. Let's look at some demo. So you don't have to use anything to use this feature. You can query from curl. You can uh, query from Postman. And it looks like a real SQL UI. It was not a SQL UI, but such a simple tool and with just a few clicks, you write a query and it works. Okay. 
another feature, one of my favorite about dashboards in ClickHouse. And you know, I'm a ClickHouse developer. I'm a backend server side developer. I like bytes and bits. What about JavaScript? When I pronounce JavaScript, my mood be lowers down to something. So I will not pronounce JavaScript frequently, but nevertheless, on weekends, I'm actually a front-end developer. And I developed this advanced dashboard. Let's take a look. Here it is. The first you might notice that this dashboard is absolutely gorgeous. It is so nice. When I when I'm looking at this dashboard, I want to, I don't know, I want to lick it. I want whatever. It is so nice, it is fast. It, it even has a dark theme. But what is new in this dashboard? First of all, mass edits. You press this button and it will give you full configuration. You can copy it, you can paste it and edit uh, the dashboard accordingly. It will not save it for you. You will have to copy and paste. Another feature, you can maximize the chart and this is new in the release. And you, now you can even drag these charts. See how beautiful it is. It is, it is just amazing. I can, I can drag this chart and play it for hours. I can forget about the workload on this server. It is enough. I, I like it so much. Okay. Let's continue because I can play for such a long time and we have only 10 minutes. What about something new in ClickHouse Cloud? The first one is the most interesting. A new table engine, Shared Merge Tree. This is a table engine designed specifically for ClickHouse Cloud, specifically for clusters with shared storage that can scale dynamically. Say this minute you have a cluster with three replicas. One minute later, you have a cluster with 10 replicas and it should change the configuration quickly and easily. And shared merge tree is a special table engine with separated metadata. And actually it is a simplification in contrast to replicated merge tree. It provides better scalability, better performance of inserts and merges. It allows to save costs, our costs in ClickHouse Cloud and consequently, it allows us to offer better price for you. So ClickHouse Cloud will be the best service, not only comparing uh, basically comparing to everything else. And it gives faster server startup and it even reduces complexity. The only thing to note that it is a special kind of feature that is available exclusively for ClickHouse Cloud and some other partner cloud providers. So don't expect it to be in open source anytime soon and I appreciate uh, your understanding, and if you use uh, if you use self-managed uh, setups, it is it is unneeded most of the time because uh, typically you just provision your service and uh, you use it with a specified sizing, not with a, say dynamic scaling with uh, shared storage and with uh, full separation of metadata. What else? 
Now MySQL protocol is also available in ClickHouse Cloud. It is not exclusive for ClickHouse Cloud. ClickHouse server has MySQL protocol among others. And actually ClickHouse is a polyglot database. It has RESTful interface, native protocol, gRPC, MySQL and Postgres protocols, and even ODBC and JDBC drivers and a lot of other drivers. And the question is, what do you want us to implement next? Maybe ADBC, don't be confused with ODBC. Maybe you want MongoDB protocol or Redis interface, why not? Tell me, and we will try to implement it. Okay, what about integrations? Now we have the official connector for Power BI. Power BI is a business intelligence system for Windows. It is nice, but it has some, um, say, disadvantages. For example, you connect it to a data source and it tries to fetch all the data. And if you connect it to ClickHouse with petabytes of data, often Power BI will just choke. Uh, but with the official connector, you enable and switch to direct queries and everything works nicely. It will construct queries for you. It will not try to load all the data set. It will use the power of ClickHouse. And what to read on our blog and what to watch on YouTube. Uh, many interesting stuff. For example, the integration of ClickHouse and Hugging Face. On Hugging Face, you, you know there are a lot of data sets for AI. And typically you want to use ClickHouse for data analysis and data preparation. It is easy. Uh, what about interesting case studies? Clavio or Clavio or Clavio, how to pronounce it? Okay, it does not matter. It does not matter at all. As, as long as they are using ClickHouse and they do, they do uh, use ClickHouse and have a lot of benefits. What about Instacart? There are many, many companies starting from Insta, Instacart, Instabug, Instana, Instagram, and most of them are using ClickHouse. I'm not sure about Instagram. I'm sure about everything else. Uh, message board on Gage, they also use ClickHouse and they share how, how nice it actually is. Okay, and a few technical articles about the internals of asynchronous inserts. If you want, if you prefer video content, there is a channel. The live stream will be also published on this channel. So subscribe, share with friends. And I'm ready to answer your question. We have just five minutes, just five minutes. Okay, I think we're gonna have enough time for five minutes. Uh, five minutes will be enough time. So, um, Lots of questions. Well, not a huge number of questions this week, but some some pretty good ones. Um, Nikolai's asked a few, which I think you've addressed one, which is open sourcing of shared merge tree. Um, that's Alexa. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, but I think you've covered that pretty well. For now, it's just in cloud. Uh, it won't be an open source. Uh, Alexa, do you want to add to anything to that? Yeah, shared merge tree is currently exclusive for ClickHouse Cloud. Uh, currently, we are not going to open source it, but uh, nevertheless, we are collecting uh, your feedback about possible applications, because potentially 
um, there could be more applications of this feature than we see uh, today. And maybe uh, there could be something even bigger than uh, this particular feature. But for specifically for shared merge tree, it is just proprietary. Okay. Um, we have a question with regards to, which I think is something we could document better actually. Uh, what about compatibility between ClickHouse and ClickHouse Keeper? If someone's upgrading ClickHouse Keeper every single month, uh, should they be keeping ClickHouse Keeper up to date? What are our compatibility guarantees there between versions of ClickHouse Keeper and ClickHouse? Uh, basically, 100% forward and backward uh, compatibility, and you don't have to upgrade uh, ClickHouse Keeper at all. Just install whatever the latest version is and forget about it, and it will continue to work uh, for years. And ClickHouse Keeper has a much uh, less, uh, I would say, uh, surface. So Sometimes it is receiving some new features that sometimes could be used to optimize uh, some internals of ClickHouse, but compatibility is always guaranteed. And uh, uh, ClickHouse Keeper is smaller, simpler. Uh, it is absolutely reliable. No problem if you install it and say, forget for five years. Yeah, I think we would, if we uh, had any breaking changes there, we would let you know. So I, um, I think obviously you get the improvements that we make in terms of uh, Click Housekeeper is continuously undergoing improvements. I know that the team were talking about it today that they're even making further yeah, performance yeah. improvements. So always benefit from that if you do upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, one from Lavon, support for unique constraints, any regards, any any plans regarding this? Yeah, we uh, listed uh, this feature in the roadmap for this year, 2023. Uh, but as I see, most likely we will not uh, have this feature in this year. We will have to postpone it and it will be included in the next year roadmap. It is not easy to implement. There are some tricks required, uh, but nevertheless, it is included in the roadmap. Okay, it's good. It's good to know we're thinking about it. Um, and it's, it's so a few things regarding the dashboards. So this is a really quick, easy question. But the dashboards themselves, do they have any kind of impact on ClickHouse itself in terms of storage, CPU, RAM, disk space? I know they're very, very lightweight. So maybe you just want to reiterate that. Mm -hmm. uh, by default, uh, ClickHouse collects uh, some telemetry about itself and stores this telemetry locally inside ClickHouse. And this is ClickHouse way. Everything that you do, uh, like logs, metrics, traces, Everything is stored in the same ClickHouse server. There are uh, smaller tables like system.query log, uh, larger tables like system.text log, uh, system.metrics log, and uh, another table slightly larger like system.asynchronous metrics log. And my recommendation. Uh, by default, don't worry about these tables at all. Even if you don't need them, just keep keep them just in case. At least they contain some interesting data that you might need later. But if you have a click, click house on very constrained setup, say just tens of gigabytes of storage, very small disks, uh, three tiers. Sometimes you will find that these tables are large, like a few gigabytes, and you might want to disable something like system.asynchronous log. And this is also normal. You will not get this data on the dashboard, but it will not sp spend the disk space. Okay. 
Thanks, Alexi. We have, um, I know this is something that I think you've just, we discussed, you read, I asked you this once, what about mat, uh, faster map support? Like, and we, at the moment, we obviously read the whole map when we need to access a key. Uh, I know there were some plans around it. Can you give us an upgrade, an update with regards to that? Mm -hmm. This is an interesting question because we already tried uh, at least one implementation from, from external contributor to optimize maps with the hash tables. But the results were paradoxically. So the results were as, as follows. When you have a small map, it does not help. It makes things even worse. When you have a large map, say at least 10,000 of entries, uh, these large maps became slow on its own as a large uh, values in, inside tables. Sometimes large values are not good for different reasons. Uh, for the reason that you have to read a bunch of uh, records and this block uh, takes a lot of memory it takes more uh, CPU and memory bandwidth, memory pressure to process. And we find out that even if a specific uh, indexing of map values speed up this a little, the scenario when it is beneficial is not good at all. So this feature is not merged and not implemented. But still, we can think about it from a different perspective. We should not take it uh, as is and add the index into the value. Instead, we should implement a different data type that will automatically split maps into different values, uh, into different streams of data on disk. And this is the feature that is in active development. Uh, you can check it, it is named sharded maps. Okay, that's great. Um, there are a few other questions, we're out, we're out of time, unfortunately. I think we tried to answer everything. Um, I just like to shout out to Ramazan especially who made some good suggestions. Uh, we had support suggestions for Cypher support and GraphQL um, as an alternative to MySQL. Probably not going to do that anytime soon, but uh, we welcome a community PR. Um, and also a few things around a comment that it would have been nice to support Plus as a concatenation operator as a more intuitive way for people to concatenate strings, but appreciate it's already probably overloaded elsewhere. Okay, uh, first about Cypher and GraphQL. Mm. Maybe we want, we want to implement it, but I don't want some overflow of query languages. <laughs> it will be just too many. Do you remember a database name at ArangoDB or Mm. Yeah, I do actually. No, actually, I had a had a, have a a friend that was looking at them recently. And yeah, sometimes when you do too many things, it is you do nothing, uh, nothing actually well. Uh, okay, and uh, the second question was about what was the second question? Uh, the second question was regarding concatenation operator. Ah. The fact that it's it's a it's a double bar and not a plus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is controversial because um, when you have uh, this double bar, it explicitly say that this is a concatenation. That's why we can use this concatenation operator not only for strings but also for tuples. And it will be not ambiguous with uh, the case when you want pair uh, like element wise operation on tuples. And also uh, SQL is originally a 
weekly type language so you can easily uh, say uh, uh, do plus operate plus operator to add two strings that actually contain numbers not every database does it but say sqlite does it and it is fully standard compliant so again if we will use plus as a concatenation it will introduce just a bit of confusion i don't like confusion so i am trying to be quite conservative uh, in introducing overloads uh, syntax uh, sugar whatever okay that's probably it unfortunately um thanks for everyone for listening i don't know nick if you got some final words i don't know if you're gonna close it out but thanks for everyone for visiting thanks alexa for your time for those questions i know we went a little bit over i think there was some great answers there ah i forgot to announce uh so september 7th uh, september yes. 7th yeah we will have a special event name it clickhouse cloud webinar or clickhouse cloud community call whatever you want to know about clickhouse cloud if you want to ask provocative questions unusual questions special questions about uh cost efficiency about uh, pricing about features about do we want to say move our focus entirely to clickhouse cloud no i don't suggest you to ask this question so i advise you to join our webinar uh on september 7th dale do we have a link uh i'm sure i can come up with one quickly if you go to events company slash events uh, you go to our home page and go to events it should be there and just okay that. just just type clickhouse.com and you will find it yeah it's company slash and this company slash news events so I'll put it in this in the chat okay, okay. thank you thanks everyone see you in uh, in just a week